Hi, I'm Jermaine Halegua, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Film and Media Studies. I specialize in new media studies, new media theory, cultural geography of media, digital technologies, social practices around digital technologies, but also power relations around new, new media, so emerging technologies, and how people might use them or how people imagine them to be used in the future. Just through this idea of using digital technologies at this university, I've spoken to people from geography, from urban planning, from architecture, from the English department, from um, community activist groups, from city government, who are all interested in either finding out different ways that technology can help them better understand the communities that they study or the communities that they work with or what might I be able to add to understanding the way that these digital technologies work. So I think simultaneously showing the end product is important but I think it's also really important to be transparent about the process that got you there so that it's not proprietary, that it's not this sort of exclusive knowledge but that you're sharing not only your findings but also the way that these technologies work and how you figured out to use them. So I know with all of my projects we're going to try and make that very transparent and we've been striving to come up with very simple ways of doing seemingly complex things but Right now we're sort of in the complex phase and we haven't quite broken it down into, well, how could we give this tool or how could we give these methods to some other community with a lot less skills, a lot less resources to do it themselves. So I think that digital humanities can really help maybe not just interdisciplinarity between departments, but maybe an interdisciplinarity or connection between communities outside of academia as well as within. Looking for feedback from the city, looking for feedback from these bike advisory co committees, looking for feedback from bicyclists in general, so the local population of Lawrence, to help us make sense of um, questions about cycling, cycling culture, cycling experience, cycling infrastructure in Lawrence, Kansas. So that's one that is kind of bringing in not just data, but voices from a lot of different people to create this narrative about what is it like to be experiencing bicycling in Lawrence, Kansas. But also, I mean, if you think about it, I'm doing a neighborhood, a study of information flows um, over social media, but over digital technologies, or not using digital technologies within neighborhoods, within the neighborhood context. And I'm working with an urban planner on that. And if you think about it, I mean, we did a survey and we're planning on doing interviews. I would think of these people as our collaborators. They're participants in our study, but we're trying to give their experience voice. So we're trying to speak with them and not just for them. And I think that's a highly collaborative um, experience. It's a highly collaborative project. Well, for the collaborative mapping project that I'm doing about bike preference and bike safety, I'm working with Zan Widell and the Institute for Policy and Social Research, and she's a GIS specialist. So I teamed up with Zan, and she is very well versed in how to kind of customize Google Maps, but also build databases and build archives around certain data, um, access or invite people to produce user-generated content. Um, she's overlaid the bicycle, the city's bicycle rideability map onto Google Maps, so she's highly customizing Google Maps to create um, both a user-generated database, and she's creating a user-generated gener database um, from scratch, basically. But as far as ready-made tools go, I'm also going to start experimenting with a service called, a mapping service called CardoDB, which I've haven't played around too much yet, but one problem that we're trying to find tools to solve is, um, or help us solve, is how to add video to along a map route, along a road route. So if you're taking a bike ride, for example, from Old Father Studios up to campus, but then you kind of stop in multiple locations and then you come back, the starting point and the ending point are the same point. So how do you kind of map this circle, like match your video, basically geocode your video onto, um, onto a specific location? that might have the same starting and ending point. And we're looking at a couple of apps that might help us do that as well, but we haven't quite figured out exactly what to do. So we're using cell phones um, to kind of geocode the video as well to see if we can access that and map that onto something else using CardoDB. So Google Maps, CardoDB, Google Fusion Tables. Um, I look for a couple of other projects. I'm looking at the digital traces left over Foursquare, so I'm not really using um, any sort of 
you know, digital technologies to process that. But I have been playing around a little bit with Deduce, which is um, similar to NVivo, but a little bit easier to use. So I'm using Deduce for a little bit of coding on a lot of the projects, so qualitative coding. Also with Foursquare, Foursquare has a lot of they're, t they're dabbling in a lot of visualization tools, so I have been playing around with some of their basic visualization tools as well that anyone can access if they use Foursquare. I'm working with a co-author um, at Rutgers who is building several visualization tools for Foursquare data as well, so we're kind of using some of his that are in beta and we're looking at some of um, his projects that um, have already mapped Foursquare data, like live hoods. Bicycle accidents started because I was in an accident personally and I was like, wait, how can we better educate people about accidents so this wouldn't happen to somebody else? I was like, well, maybe I could map hotspots. So that's why I got into Google Fusion Tables. That's why I turned to Google Maps. I had this problem that I wanted to solve and this tool was accessible to me. Play around, see what's online. If you have a problem that you want to solve, see how other researchers have solved this problem. So you end up seeing a lot of collectives that put, uh, that collect, or maybe a lot of sites that collect research being done in the digital humanities and put it online for you to kind of browse through and play with and look at. So tinkering, I mean, I can't emphasize that enough, is having, being curious and then tinkering with a lot of these technologies, but looking towards those sites that aggregate or even sometimes curate uh, digital humanities research.